to the Insomniac Show with Nicolette and Brian. We'll get real deep with you. Educating, inspiring, and solving problems with some of the most inspirational humans on the planet. Buckle up and come on the journey. I'm excited. All right, guys, I'm Nicolette, and today Brian and I are here with Lauren Fernandez. She is a former Secret Service agent and an author, and she's pretty funny from uh, what I can tell from her book. So she's here to talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, what inspired her and some of her story. We're going to have some fun today. So thank you so much, Lauren, and I hope we learn more about where you got this name, Talk Back Barbie. So, <laughs> oh, I'm so that. happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. This is going to be a lot of fun. I can already tell. <laughs> I know. I feel it. Okay. First question Secret Service. Yeah. <laughs> you always jump ahead, bro. I well, some days. If I really have this important question, like that's just, you know, that's not a big portion of the population could say that's their job title. Let's, right. let's be honest. I agree. It's something that's really rare. And that's why I decided to write a unique book about my experience because my experience was unlike anybody else who's ever gone through the Secret Service. Not to mention, not many people go through Secret Service training to begin with. Right. So I just have a lot of fun, unique experiences to share. All right. So let's start back further. Is this a dream you had when you were a little girl? You know, is this something you knew you wanted to do? Yeah. So when I was 10, I decided I wanted to be an FBI agent and work for the Violent Crimes Unit. That was my dream. That was my goal. And I set off on a mission to do that. My dad was very annoying and he would every day always ask me and my sister, he'd be like, Chrissy, Lauren, what do you want to do with your lives? What do you want to be when you grow up? Every single day. So we would say the typical answers. And then lo and behold, I decided that the FBI was what I wanted to do. And I set off to do that. So I read books, watched movies. I did networked. I talked to anybody who worked in that field. I just wanted to know everything I could about the FBI right. or any federal law enforcement agency. What ended up happening was when I went to Virginia Tech, I went and I tried four different majors. My fourth major was a dead ringer for what I needed to do with my life, which was political science, legal studies. I don't know why I tried the other three because <laughs> Not a good fit. Wasn't well, that what we do in college, right? You just sort of go, let me, I think I want to be. No, right. Can I know work. what they are? Yeah. So I started off as a biochemistry major because I wanted to work. I wanted to be a CSI investigator and be there, discover, you know, figuring out crimes. And it was not for me. I couldn't even pass biology. And I was like, this is really difficult. Then I went into accounting information systems, which is, it's like accounting, but it's more along the IT side. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I have a lot of accountants in my family. So I thought that would be a really good fit for me. It was not. Accounting is not my forte. I do not like numbers like that. And then I went into political science. What was the other one I left off? Uh, now I'm blanking on the other major I did. I was just <laughs> excited so many, right? see how random they were and, unconnect- and disconnected. <laughs> Yes, and I did all four of them in four years. <laughs> well, so I was very organized. And what I did was I, I did a lot of the extracurriculars so that you no, know, I would always have those to fill in the gaps for when I was graduating. So I was actually able to get, be done in four years because of the way I organized my schedule every single semester. So that helped tremendously <laughs> on college preparing. So I wasn't there for six years. <laughs> Yeah, as you're like that biochemistry, that was my science and my elective I, and my listen, I know biochemistry and organic chemistry, whole nother ball game for me. It's, it's funny too, because I actually took a lot of chemistry classes, but I was like more like I want to be a mad scientist, not an FBI agent. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I just I think it'd be so cool. I mean, you watch all those CSI shows and they're in the labs and what they're investigating, they're putting all these puzzle pieces together and it's so exciting. However, life in that world is not the same as we see on TV. And that's something my book really sheds a lot of light on because you see all these movies and these other books written by Secret Service agents and officers, and you you see how exciting they are because they talk about all the fun things that they did. But I talk about the side of the Secret Service that nobody gets to see. And that's the side of the pranks. We love to play pranks on everybody. We fall asleep on post. We're reading, we're doing crossword puzzles. Because life is not always exciting because people aren't jumping the White House fence every single day, you know, and we're having bomb threats every day. And when it does happen, it's exciting. 
But this is the whole behind the scenes mm-hmm. side of law enforcement and secret service that you get to see. Right. And we're, we're playing pranks on each other. You guys have some really must have some really interesting tools and information. To use oh, my, yes. They would just joke with me. And I was very naive and young and I wanted to prove myself. And so they would just pull pranks on me all the time. And they're like, why do you always believe us? Every time we tell you to do something, you do it. And I mean, I would just embarrass myself over the radio and the radio goes to everybody in the Secret Service working right there at the White House. So I would broadcast and say these things that they wanted me to say over the radio, and everybody is hearing me say this, and they're laughing hysterically. Pretty funny. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, we were a mess. But we had so much fun, and we really enjoyed it. Well, you know, and you mentioned something when you talk about, you know, you were very organized even before you got there. Um, You know, I think that might tie into then some of what you talk about um, setting your resume up for success, right? So I wanted to talk more about that concept. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so I, since I already knew, a lot of college kids don't know what they want to go do with their lives. I already knew I wanted to be an FBI agent. So I was in high school and in college setting my resume up for success. And what I mean by that was I was networking all the time. I was going to college career fairs, talking to anybody who worked for FBI, CIA. I was getting business cards. I was sending out emails, seeing if they would write referral letters. I did two different internships during the summer with the Gwinnett County Police Department and District Attorney's Office here in Georgia. So that was very, very good experience on learning the local police, what they do on a day-to-day basis, getting that really good experience. And then I got to see the whole other side of it working for the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. So I got to see the court side of it, the law side of it. Right. So I would just, I constantly was doing stuff. I did a citizens police Academy, which was a free program that you could do up in Blacksburg, Virginia, where Virginia tech is. And I took that and that was a great course where you got to actually interact and do day-to-day stuff that cops do. So that was great for my resume to show the Secret Service I did have some law enforcement background because I was coming straight out of college when I joined the Secret Service. So I was young. I was inexperienced. I had no military experience, nothing like that. So it took a lot to boost my resume to make sure it popped when they saw me. So what are they looking for in the Secret Service, right? You know, I mean, I I definitely get like if you have maybe a military background Mm -hmm. or things like that. But what are they really looking for in terms of like, you know, the character of the individuals? That they're- well, they're, the biggest thing they're looking for is a clean background and a clean record. Honestly, that's the biggest thing they're looking for. They're making sure that you have no foreign ties to anybody. They're making sure, and not that they, you can't have foreign ties, but meaning, do you have any financial issues right. on top of having foreign contacts or foreign businesses? It just, it creates more questions and they have to really investigate that to make sure that you are going to be paid off when you're in the secret service. So money and finances are huge, making sure that you have a good financial past and a good financial record, obviously a clean record, no arrests, that kind of stuff. So they're looking for an upstanding person. And they're also looking for, obviously you can do military, but they're looking for somebody who has the physical endurance to withstand the training that you have to go through. Because even though it's a it's a very mentally challenging career, it is a very physically challenging career as well. So you have to be mentally prepared and physically. So is is there see and this is I know nothing about this. So is there like you know when you go into like the police academy, I just have a lot of yes. friends who are cops, but they they have to do that that training part, right? The mm-hmm. for is it the same thing? Like you have to qualify, like be able to do like whatever bench your body weight or do like a million sit ups or whatever. A million. Yes. That's, wow. that's, it's exactly. So you have a range for your age, obviously being male or female. I don't know what they are now. This was 15 years ago as in the Secret Service. So it could have changed a little bit since then, but you do have to pass. So I had to do so many push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and you had to run a mile and a half in a certain amount of time. If you did not, you could not graduate. And then you also have to pass a whole other array of things. You have to get a certain uh, score on your shooting range tests. You there's just so many different tests that you have to complete. You have to do complete mat training tests. So you have training where they prepare prepare you, and then they have a a test, and you have to go and pass that. And if you don't, you don't graduate. So there's ton, every 
page uh, that you turn when you're during training, you are constantly being tested on everything. Okay, so now I have a question. The jujitsu is coming out of me right now. Do you do, do you do like combatives? Do you guys learn combatives in the FBI? Yes. Yeah, so it was physical thing, Secret Service and FBI. Oh, no. sorry. I don't no, know. I'm just they're not the same I, thing, but they I screwed up. Did I screw it up here? <laughs> but it's federal law enforcement, and they okay, they better, FBI and, and Secret Service go through very similar, very rigorous federal law enforcement training. Is very it's much more intense than local law enforcement training. So I've talked to a lot of local cops and that's why they really respect the federal law enforcement because it's it's way more intense than local law enforcement. Not putting down local law enforcement at all. Their job is extremely important. And actually their job is riskier than what we were doing because we were just protecting the White House. Right. So we didn't have to be around criminals and stuff every single day. We were just protecting the White House and protecting the President of the United States, which is a very, very, very important job. Yeah. But it wasn't as exciting as local law enforcement because you're just protecting the president. You're not dealing with the crazy day to day life that local law enforcement deals with every single day. Right. So I hope that clarifies it a little bit. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. But I still have my question. What yeah. were the combatives you guys went through? Was it just like, you know, training or, you know, it was just some basic combatives? Yeah. So protected body. So we had to do a lot of stuff where you have to learn how to flip the assailant over your shoulder. You know, if someone comes up from behind and they're trying to choke hold you, you learn how to get out of that. You learn how to get out of if they have a gun pointed at you and you're close enough in range that you can disarm that gun and get it out of their hands so that you are you no longer have, you're not at gunpoint anymore. So we did we learned a lot of self-defense tactics while we were in training, mostly dealing with assailant combative situations like that. She's so kick-ass. I, she's like, I, know. <laughs> well, I, I mean, think about this too, she, right? You're in the, you're in the secret service too. You, there's a commitment to like throwing your life in front of a bullet to protect the president, right? Like think of just right. even starting off with that thought of when mm -hmm. you're going into this is, you know, you have to be a pretty, you know, uh, savage human to, you know what I mean? You, you want to get into that. I totally agree. Yeah. And that's why I tell people, I didn't know what I was getting as much research and stuff I did as I did. I did not know what I was truly getting into until I got into it. And with that being said, I didn't realize that when I left the secret service, I was going to be a completely different person than when I first entered. And I never did karate or MMA or any of these types of self-defense classes. I didn't shoot for hours on end until your fingers are bloody, bloody and blistered. You just have to dive into a whole different side of yourself when you go through Secret Service training. And I think that's why I've become the person I am today, where I'm just very thick skinned and I'm very tough. And when, when I cry, it's because something really, really, really hurt my feelings. But it has to be something that like a death of a family member or death of a pet. You know what I'm saying? Something very extreme or else I'm just kind of like, Oh, I can deal with that. That's okay. <laughs> so you're not crying, crying at like romantic comedies or anything like that. Right, right. It's just, I, you just, it turns you into a completely different person. And I know they say that as a cliche, but it is true. Mentally and physically, you just, you are different and you can push yourselves to extreme measures. Like I can compartmentalize really well where I'm like, okay, I'm hurting right now. I'm going to get through this. And then when I'm done, then I can die or I can sit over here and be in pain <laughs> and until I get through the situation. Yeah. I cannot focus on the pain until I'm done. So that happened in a tennis match, actually, uh, two days ago. I pulled some, <laughs> something popped in the back of my leg. And of course, it doesn't just end in the second set. We have to go to a third set and we're out in the like burning up heat. My leg is killing me and I had to get through a whole nother set. It happened, I think, at the beginning of the second set. So I just compartmentalized and was like, I'm not in pain. I'm okay. Still had to sprint after the balls. And then when I was done, oh my gosh, it got really tight and was killing me, but I had to do it because I had to win the match. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, yeah, that's how competitive people are too. You know, yeah. you sort of go, okay, I'm going to put my pain aside. That's I'm going right. to compartmentalize it. Right. Like athletes are, and you know, people who are mm -hmm. dedicated to things like the secret service, you have to put that away so you can accomplish whatever it is you need to accomplish. That's exactly. And it's just, it, it's a mentality that you get when you go through such intense training like that. It just, it, like I said, it changes who you are as a person. I went in thinking, oh my gosh, I have to slam someone down to the ground. Oh, I have to punch my friend in the face, even though you have padding and masks and stuff on and you get, you're like, oh, I don't know if I really want to do that. And then you get punched in the face and your neck is like cracked 
and you're like, okay, never mind. And you just start slamming on them because you realize you've got to defend yourself or else you're going to get hurt. <laughs> now I want to, I want to talk for a second about, you know, you are, and you've entered a very male dominated profession, right? I looked, I, I was just curious with the statistics where I don't know how accurate they are, but it, it seemed to be about 9% uh, right. are female. Uh, that's a minority. I mean, <laughs> to say the mm-hmm. least, what was that like? What was that experience like? And, and, you know, how did others respond around you as well? So I actually really loved it. I thrive working in male dominated environments. And I don't know if that's because I'm naive and I just take everything, whatever they say. And I'm like, sure, sure. Yeah, that sounds great. And I laugh and giggle if I don't understand what it means, you know, but I loved it. I thought it was fun. It was me and one other girl in our training class. I felt like the guys were my brothers. They, they had your back. They protected you. I, I thought it was really fun. Now, on the other side of things, I was obviously a Southern debutante. I was judged based on my appearance before I even spoke a word, before I even proved what I could do on the mats or in the shooting range there. Uh, a technician did not like me, and he immediately wanted to have me kicked out of the Secret Service the, the second he set eyes on me. I hadn't said a word. He just was like, she's not going to pass the Secret Service. She's not going to work at the White House. She's done. I'm going to gonna get her kicked out. What is a technician? Can you tell us? Yeah, sorry. I I don't ever explain that. So you have obviously sergeants and captains. So a technician is somebody who is at training. For instance, you have a the gun range. He's a technician because he specifically teaches that. This technician specifically taught us map training and self-defense training and training out on outside and all that kind of stuff of how to protect yourself with your weapons and in these uh, really intense scenarios. So he's, they're called technicians because they're they're training. They're the trainers, basically. They're our trainers. So he immediately went, wanted to have me kicked out of the Secret Service. So on that side of the coin, working in a male-dominated environment, he judged a book by, by its cover before even getting to know me or understand me. Whereas my classmates got to know me, worked very, very well with me. We were like brothers and sisters, and it was so much fun. So I had both extreme spectrums working in a male dominated environment. I loved it. But then on the other side, I was basically getting discriminated against all because he didn't think I, a girly girl could do these things. And so I proved him wrong, obviously, but he put me through a lot of intense training scenarios that other people didn't have to encounter. And actually on another podcast, she had a great point. She was like, well, don't you think that being put up against a 300 pound guy in the mat training while, you know, I'm only 120 pounds, five, five, he was six, five, puts you in a real life scenario of something you're going to have to deal with at the white house. And I looked at her and I said, that is a a great point. I said, this is why I never felt like he was pick, even though he was picking on me, I always felt I was getting the best training possible because I was getting put in these situations that nobody else was getting put in because he didn't like me. So he was trying to hurt me. He was trying to push me to my max. He was trying to make me quit is what he was trying to make me do. But what he didn't realize is that it was actually making me stronger Mm -hmm. and making me more competitive. And it was making me want to fight harder to prove myself than it was to give up. I mean, I didn't even care at that point. I just wanted to prove that I could do it. I didn't care what he said or did to me. And so I actually had, that's why I said it's so hard to say because I had the best of both worlds where I did prove myself and I came out on top through once I graduated. But at the same time, he was training me better for real life experiences than anybody else in the training was getting. So I was actually getting trained above and beyond everybody else. (laughs) So, And and I think, you know, to your point, you know, he was judging the book by its cover, right? He didn't know how determined you were. He didn't know how much drive you had. He didn't know how hard it would be to break you. Right. You know, like he just didn't know any of those things. So even forget about like whether you're male, female, you got blonde hair, you got dark hair, whatever. Like, you know, people don't know what other people are inside their heart. Right. How much heart they have. And that's what really becomes important in situations like that. No, I totally agree. And that's why my nickname, Talk Back Barbie, which was my literal nickname in the Secret Service, that's what they knew me as, is Talk Back Barbie. And it's after this one scenario with the mean technician and it's in the book. And he's screaming my face, 
because I questioned him. I was in a military environment. And basically when you're in a military environment, it is yes, sir. No, sir. And I am not very good at that. You, you tell me to do something and it's not that I'm not going to do it, but I contemplate what you're telling me to do. Does that make sense in the, in the scenario? And if it does, then I will comply. And if it doesn't, I'm going to question you. And that's just the way what happens because I am a self thinker. I like to think for myself and I like to think outside the box. And I've always been like that. And it gets me in trouble sometimes, but at the same time, it's, I've always been able to think for myself, which is huge when you're entering new situations in life. And so I talked back to him and that's how I got the nickname talk back Barbie. So mm. I didn't talk back. I questioned him. Right. right? Talking back. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how well I do it. <laughs> how well, I do. It's very so, hard. I, well, I'm know, not very good. There's like passive aggressive, and then I think <laughs> Nicolette and I and you we're all aggressive aggressive, right? <laughs> back, we're just gonna come back right at you, you know. And, well, I just and, simply and, asked a question. I'm. I said, "Well, are you telling me that I can't do this at the White House? We're we're reenacting a real life scenario." Right. He and I was right, and he was taken aback that I, first of all, even said that to him and just didn't obey him. And so he was even madder because I was right with my question that he kicked me out of the training session and I was done for the day because he was so mad. Well, do you think that, I mean, you know, here questioning things, you know, usually people that get offended by it, it's, it's because their own short-sightedness or their own, I'm stuck in the way of doing something in a very particular way is the reason why they get frustrated. Like they never like open their mind to think about it outside of the concept of how they know it. That, that is exactly correct. And it was, it was his way or the highway. And if you didn't do exactly what he said and wanted you to do, then he did not like you and you were in trouble. So there's, he was definitely set in his ways is the right way to say it. Very set in his ways, wanted to just you to just obey what he said and the other guys they didn't want to really back me up because they were like can you just keep your mouth shut please <laughs> you don't get in trouble too because he's gonna make us run like five extra miles and we just are dead for today and <laughs> they're like don't piss off the technician we just want to get yeah. through our training today <laughs> i know i know but i did every single time <laughs> i pissed him off <laughs> you should I be like I'm, I'm making you stronger i'm making you stronger i promise <laughs> I questioned a priest once, I will say. He wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> he, he told my, my parents that I had the devil in me. <laughs> and then Why he, did, he that dumped people? her head in the baptismal fountain. You know, I don't know. No, I mean, I guess I guess I guess I don't feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd question that. Excuse me. Why do you think I'm the devil? I'm sorry. He asked her really. He said, "Should you obey your parents or or God?" And I was like, "Well, my parents are here. You know, like there are serious consequences. So I'm going to obey them. You know." I don't... <laughs> right. In the You're present like... or in the future? Let me let me pick my poison. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> apparently, that was hilarious. I was like, what kind of question is that? <laughs> that is, yeah, I've never had that question. That's I'm going to hell. The <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But, you know, you know, and we're laughing and we're and, and you are take a very humorous approach to even, you know, these stories that were maybe probably stressful at the time. Right. Uh, very stressful at the time. Yeah. I, mean, I was kind of deciding, am I even going to do this with my life? Am I going to pass training? Can I pass training with somebody who is set out to get me kicked out? Am I going to be able to even do it? So I kept pushing and pushing and ultimately I did. But it is very difficult. Now, did you find that humor helped you along the way? 100%. Humor is something that I think i have it's let me learn so much about myself because my husband, when I was writing this book, he did not want me to publish this. He did not <laughs> want me to put this out there. He, he sat down with me and he literally was like, Lauren, are you sure you want people to see the side of you? Are you sure pe- you want people to read these stories? Are you sure that you, because once you put it out there, you're never going to be able to take it back. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, yes, I want to put it out there because these stories have a huge impact on people. I think that so many people can learn through these stories. I learned, I learned so much about myself. I learned about what I could do and how strong of a person I was, but I also learned that I can laugh at a situation, but the biggest thing you're, Every time you take a turn in life, 
you can change paths. Just because you have a dream and a goal, that does not mean that because your goal or your dream changes that you failed. And that's something that is huge in this book. I set out to be an FBI agent. Obviously, I never became an FBI agent. I was Secret Service. And I discovered that that lifestyle just wasn't for me. I, I chose my family over that lifestyle. It was missing holidays, constant shift work. You, My days off could be canceled. I could have a girls' night scheduled, and it was canceled because I was forced into work. It was just a very intense lifestyle. I was newly married. It, it's very hard. It, and so it's something that you have to really be able to, as a woman, are you able to do that? Can you just leave your family at a drop of a hat to go travel wherever the FBI sends you? Mm -hmm. Secret Service, same thing. There was a lot of trips and travel involved. Right. Are you willing to just drop everything and go and do that? For me, I felt like as a woman, it was harder for me to be the mom I wanted to be and do the career I wanted to do. Now, there are tons of women who do it. And that's fine. But the mom I wanted to be, I knew that I could not have a career like the FBI if I was going to be a mom. And so I ended up choosing to be a mom instead. And that's when a year and a half ago, I decided I was going to write the book because I wanted to share all these experiences with everyone and to be able to laugh through my experiences. I don't care if you read the book and you laugh at me or you <laughs> laugh with me. Honestly, I don't care. But I think there's so many takeaways that you'll learn that through it all, laughter is the best medicine for anything. And you can think I'm Jessica Simpson for all you, all I care, as long as you're getting great takeaways from the book. <laughs> I feel inspired. That's all I want, you know? So you, you, and you left before or after you became a mom? So I left, I was only at the secret service for a year and a half. I actually, my biggest mistake I think was I left the secret service too soon I should have waited. I was young, inexperienced, as I said before. I should have waited a little longer and gone straight into government consulting, which is ultimately what I wanted to do anyway. Right. Except for I just jumped the gun to try to get normal hours. And I joined, uh, well, I accepted a job with a law firm. And that was a huge mistake because I ended up finding out discrimination happens on both sides of the mm -hmm. fence. And I was in a group with all female attorneys. I mean, there were some men, but it was a majority female attorneys. <laughs> and long story short, I ended up discovering that they were telling me to my face I was doing a really, really good job. And behind my back, I was actually making mistakes that I didn't know I was doing. And so for my three-month evaluation, they got me kicked out <laughs> because I didn't know I was making any mistakes. So anyway, I've had every story known to man through different jobs and different encounters and it's just, it's all in the book and it's, but I learned to laugh through it and to be able to say, Hey, you know what? A new door is opening and I am going to take it and I'm going to do the best I can do be uh, the best I can be in that situation. And well, that's what I did. So every path that changed and every new turn I took, I went in with open arms and with glass half full and was like, I can do this and I'm going to do this. So you know, I think one of the things you brought up earlier is being able to, you know, you're on that journey and it's okay to pivot, right. Or take yeah. a different, you know, path, you know, maybe you find out you're not on the right path or this is not for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Or right. situations happen like what happened to you where it just, you know. Right. And I think that that is so important because so many people think that just because you don't achieve your dreams, you failed. And that's not true at all. Sometimes life has all these detours, but you've got to be able to see so much positivity in the detour. You can't let the detour bog you down because if it does, you're never going to achieve anything. You're going to be your own worst enemy and your, your own failure. And that's what the book talks about too. It's just you, you are your own failure. You, you are your own success or you're your own failure. And if you're going to let someone nickname you talk back Barbie and all you're going to do is mope about it and tell them that they're discriminating against you and cutting you down and making fun of you, or are you going to take it and own it and you define what Talk Back Barbie means. They don't define what it means for you. And that's what I do in the book. Well, do you think also all these, like all these trial and errors that you have through life, and this is for, every, you know, it's a question for you, but it's for really everyone. They're to get you where you need to be. Like that's what got you to the point of writing this book, right? So all those trial and errors and things that happen along your journey, that's the story. You know, that's, that's exactly. what the story is. No, you're exactly right. And that's, they made me so strong. Yes, Secret Service training made me strong, but 
but all the other encounters and all the other jobs and all the other detours in life made me even stronger. It made me actually become way more confident in myself than I ever was when I was younger. And that's something to say from, I would never have been able to write this if I didn't have these, these encounters and these stories. And they inspire me because it made me be who I am today. And I love who I am today because I feel so confident and so strong. And I'm willing to put out my stupidity out there so that people can learn from it so that I can learn from it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do. I want to be able to learn from every mistake, failure, success in my life. And I want to learn from it and grow from it because that's how we become stronger. Do you almost feel a sense of satisfaction just, you know, even though, you, you know, you left and you feel like you left maybe too soon. Do you feel like, okay, I did that. I did it right. Like check. Cool. Now I feel satisfied. Just did it like satisfy you a little bit because I do yes. feel like that happens. You get something you're like, okay, did it. I'm good now. You know? Yeah. It checked a box that not many people can check because right. who says they work with the president of the United States at the white house. Right. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I think I felt like I accomplished my dream. My dream wasn't for me because of what I wanted to do with my life. And, but that was okay. And look what it turned into now. My dream is exact. I love talking to people. I love networking. And now I'm getting to do my dream, which is promoting my book and being able to meet awesome people like y'all and being able to just go and talk and meet and network. And I, that is what I love so much. And it's, I'm, I'm getting there eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Real question though. Yes. Which one's harder? Ready? <laughs> being a mom or being a secret service agent? <laughs> she's being probably, she's, she's probably been waiting to ask that since you were scheduled yeah, on the show. Right? Before, I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Being a mom is so hard. I only have one son and we obviously get a fertility journey to get there too. So that was even more difficult and another trial that I had to go through to get there. But I, I accomplished that and, and did that. And let me just tell you, oh my gosh, I think being a mom is harder than anything in the world. <laughs> Disciplining and, and sticking it out and being willing to say no and mean it. <laughs> it is really hard. I have to agree. I think I'd rather go be a secret service officer again. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right, so what's the, what's the next check mark? Right, that you're going for. <laughs> so the next check mark is I want to turn my book into a Netflix series or Amazon series or a movie, whatever. So think Legally Blonde meets Miss Congeniality, and you get a feel for what I'm going for and what I want in the book. I want it to be comedy. I want it to be a completely different side of the Secret Service that no movie, show, or anything is ever produced because they it's always a serious career and don't get me wrong. It's a very serious career, but I want that fun side of like a family fun film that everybody can watch together and laugh. I just think comedy right now in the way this world is going mm -hmm. is more, is more needed than ever before, because I think we just need to learn to laugh and it just makes us feel so much better. I agree. I agree. My goodness. Okay. Last question. Last question that I've been dying to ask. <laughs> Is it scary, right? Are, are, is it scary being a, a secret service agent? Were you ever scared? And maybe that goes back to the compartmentalization. Yeah, you know, I think, I think training was scarier than actually working at the White House because I didn't encounter anything mm -hmm. scary at the White House. I, fence jumpers would occur, but I was always <laughs> on the other side of the White House, so I'd have to hear through my friends that they got to pull their gun, and it was, so <laughs> and I missed out on everything. Uh, but training was was a little scary and very difficult. I mean, I had to change who I was. I was being slammed on the mat and, and knocked out of air, and I had to just regroup. It was scary. I had to go into dark scenarios with a flashlight and my semi-automatic gun, which had a paint that those have like a paint bullet. They're, they're in the shape of a bullet, and they have paint at the tip of them. And those are what you shoot in these scenarios to practice. And that was scary. I mean, your heart is racing and you're in this very scary situation, even though you know you're not going to be harmed, right. it's intense. And we had to do a plane crash sim simulation as well. And so we were dumped in this huge crate uh, cage. Think of like a white, like a shark cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what you're put in, in a pool. And you have to wait till it hits the bottom. And then you have to get out of your seatbelt and escape and find the exit 
in this cra plane crash simulation. And you have to do this. And uh, I mean, it was a little scary. <laughs> Do you guys do that? Did you, did you do that training at NASA? Because I've been to NASA where they actually have that. It's basically a plane and it rotates over underwater and you got to release yourself underwater. Right. Oh, that would be so. No, this was in a cage and it wasn't even in a, a replica of a plane. It was kind of just simulating you were sitting next to the exit. And so you just had to kind of know where the exits are and hold your breath and be able to get out of it. And yes, so it's, but it's very similar mm -hmm. and they just drop you right down there and you've got to escape and there's bubbles and everything going around. So you can't really see what's happening. So even though you know where the, the cage is and the exit, you, you have to like find the latch and you've got to get out of there and get to the top and it's nerve wracking. Is, it? yeah, is someone there to help you just out of curiosity? To it's like on a crane. So they can crane you back up if they notice, uh, <laughs> someone not coming out. <laughs> Hold your breath for 10 more minutes. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Probably be like, oh, don't worry. She can hold her breath for at least three more minutes. <laughs> yeah, be happy it wasn't the tactical instructor that had, was in control of the crane that didn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would have allowed him to be in control of that crane. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, uh, Lauren, we have... <laughs> I just keep picturing the guy rolling up the face. <laughs> a little like fishing line. Right? Like, um... Oh my goodness. Well, let me ask you first, where can we learn more about you and where can we get your book? Can you please let everybody know? My website is the best place to find all my social media handles. You can order my book through my website or the Amazon Kindle is available on Amazon. It's www.talkbackbarbie.com is my website and everything's on there. Past pictures of me in the secret service a little snippet bio, my book, and all my past podcasts and YouTube videos and radio shows, they're all on there as well. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to leave us with today? I just want to say, go for your dreams. And if your dreams change, keep fighting. Keep fighting for who you know you will become and who you want to be. And that's that's all Talk Back Barbie is all about. Thanks so much, Lauren. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>